All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, I play fast football. I'm going to do a video today on uh, getting to different fronts from our stack defense. I'm going to talk about the evolution of our stack defense, where it came from, how we first started, and what we do now to get into some different fronts. All right, make sure you check out some of our sponsors, guys. Game Strat, the sideline replay system we use. If you need a sideline replay system, check out Game Strat. Just Play Football is the uh, digital software tool that I use to uh, draw playbook stuff and then diagram plays if I need to speak at a clinic or if I need to do a webinar online, I will use Just Play to uh, diagram my stuff. DC1, shout out to Coach Sauer, all right, for sending me this great DC1, all right, mesh trucker hat. All right, DC1 is an in-game app that lets you uh, that lets you use live in-game data to make critical in-game adjustments. So Coach Sauer is a uh, defense coordinator in Texas, so make sure you check out uh, DC1. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our weight room. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Great during times like this because you can just wipe the pad down. All right. High and tight. All right. This is the high and tight football. High and tight is a training aid for ball security. Okay. So you get the high and tight ball. All right. Where you need it, you get it set up. All right. You get it set up. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but when I get it high and tight with the proper pressure points with my elbow wrist locked, all right, uh, split the tip. Got it up high and tight, it makes a beep. So once you understand and your kids feel what high and tight is, they get used to hearing the beep, you use the beep in drills, then you go on to a regular football, let them know, hey, would that beep if it was, every time they do a drill, now I just yell to them, hey, is it beeping? Would it beep? Would that ball beep? So make sure you check out high and tight. Story of the season, which is a, a great way to give your kids a memory of their season, especially in a season like this that nobody will ever forget. Give your kids something that gives them the memory of the entire season. Story of the season, we'll do a week by week synopsis of the games. They will have a write-up, they will have news, they will have stats, they will have uh, interviews, they will have um, game clips. They will take everything and do a week by week, uh, kind of like game recap. And then at the end of the season, they'll do a season recap so your kids and parents have a virtual memory of the entire season. Instead of moms just going out and getting some things to make scrapbooks, go ahead and use story of the season. Baker Sporting Goods, all right, this is our... Uh, Media Day shirt from 2019, Baker Sporting Goods, local sporting goods company here. All right, they do some work around the country outside of football as well, but they provide us, uh, they, they are who we use for player spirit packs, they're who we use for our Adidas uniforms, they're who we use for my uh, coach's gear, so make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. And then Dome Hats, which is the official headwear sponsor of Play Fest Football and the high school I'm currently at. All right, Dome Hats has a custom online a uh, hat builder where you can go online and you can build your own hat, use your own logo, your own colors, change the panels, change the style of the hat, change the eyelets up top, change the button up top. You can custom design your hat online. And then they also have all right, these awesome Play Fast football masks. If we're going to be in a time where we still have to mask up, support Play Fast. Go out and get yourself a Play Fast mask from Dome Hats all right, uh, at www.domeheadwear.co. All right, now that we're through all the good stuff, let's get to the good stuff, and now that we're through all the sponsors. I know a lot of people say, I hate all the sponsors, it takes five minutes. Fast forward through it, scrub for, through it, do what you want. These people take care of us, they're one of the reasons I can keep doing a channel, so they're going to get a shout out every day, I'm not changing that. All right, creating fronts from the stack. We used to be a 4-2-5 team. Okay, so we, a couple years going back at a different school I was at, we were a 4-2-5 team, had a 9-1 season, played pretty good defense, okay, but... There were some things in there that we needed to change a little bit. We had a very, very athletic three technique. And he's about 5'11", 290 pounds. His name was Malcolm Pierce. Great kid, one of my favorite players I've ever coached. Two-way player, played 80 snaps a game at 280 pounds, was a state uh, qualifier in wrestling, finished in the top four two or three times in his career as a heavyweight in wrestling. Great kid, smart kid, athletic kid, all right, at 290 pounds, 5'11". We would go from our overfront, all right, and we would take him from the overfront, and we would bump the the two eye or the the one technique. We would bump to stack, and we would take, all right, we would take the uh, we would take the three technique, Malcolm, and we bump him back there to stack. We move the mic there and the will there. So that's originally how we got into the stack with the same personnel. And then what we would do is I would just teach Malcolm how to get back where he needs to be, and everybody else in the defense, get back where you need to be, all right, to play our over front defense. So if, if we just made a stack call with no other movements to it, they would line up in the stack, all right, the, the, the end to the strong side would stunt back to his seven technique, the nose would stunt away into his one or two eye, Malcolm would walk up and blitz, all right, the B-gap strong side, 
And now we would get back to seven, three, okay, again, this is debatable, one or, or two I, whatever you want to call it in there, all right, and our five on the backside. So we get back to our normal over front in four, two, five defense coming from the stack. So that was one of the first things we did, all right, is we went to the stack look just as a change up, and when we taught it, we told, we told the guys that played a three technique, you have to get back, and then the rest of the D-line and the backers and everybody else, you have to get back where you belong in our over front and move to it from the stack front. So we never taught uh, new stunts. We never had new signals. We never had new terminology. We just made a stack call instead of, uh, instead of an over call. We made a stack call, and then they returned to everything. All right, so that would be if we just made a base call. If we started to incorporate some of our stunts in, if we started to build in some of our stunts, so if we said over twist, over twist for us, all right, is the three technique first with the end long sticking, and then the nose pot, the three technique has to become the contained player, either through penetration or versus a pass set. If he can't penetrate, he's got to all right, loop outside the, the pass set of the tackle, and then the end comes back under and long sticks. So when we went to the stack, we would say stack twist. He would get up there and do it from depth first. He would long stick second. Everybody else would return to their alignment, and we would get to the twist stunt from stack. All right, so all we did was we just took the three technique, backed them up, went into the twist stunt, all right, from, uh, from the stack look. All right, for us, blood was a way, blood was a post-snap movement that got us virtually into an underfront. So blood was a way that we would get post-snap into an underfront from our overfront. So if we said blood, we were telling the nose, all right, we were telling the, the two eye and the three technique to go one gap, all right, under, post snap, which ends up making it look like an under front. So, and I'll draw it up just so you can be clear on that. So the blood movement for us from the four two five or the over front, the blood movement for us look like this. All right, that's what the blood movement looked like for us from that. So when we went to the sack front, we just had to shade the nose a little bit to get there because it's a two-gap move now. He would get out there. He'd stay there. He'd stay there. He'd walk up and go, and that A got there, and now we, had, we got to a version of an under front. So we could get to over. We could get to under. We could run all right, any, of our, any of our games that we ran on the defensive line, we could run. So I could recreate some of the different fronts that I wanted to. I could recreate those fronts just by moving the three technique who went back to stack my backer, just by moving him back to his original position and teaching all the other D linemen, what is your assignment in over? When we play the over front, what is your assignment in blood? All right, well, coach, I got to spark the weak side B gap. Okay, I got to go from a two and cross the guard's face to the B gap. Okay, well, let's do it from the stack and just adjust your alignment and be a, a shade and two gap move, all right, from the stack. We could get back to all of our over stuff from the stack without ever changing personnel. And the only thing that ever changed, so we had back in the day, we had in our over front, we had movements like twist, blood, exit, pirate, rub, thumbs. So those were all D-line movements. We could get to any one of those going to the stack by calling the same call and just putting the stack call in front because the personnel didn't change. So stack rub for us meant the front side was seven and three, and on the back side we were going to get a B gap charge, and then we were going to be an A gap run player and a looper on pass. It was our weak side rush in in the B gap. Okay, so that was so that was rub. We could get to rub from the stack. All right, thumbs for us. Thumbs for us was rub on this side and we would run our exit stunt on the front side, and exit for us was the end, under, and the three technique loop. So it was a little bit more movement involved here, but we could get back to the thumb stunt, and we could run the thumb stunt out of stack just by teaching the three D lineman and the stack three technique that's at the mic now. They all go back to their normal, uh, to, the, to their normal assignment in the overcall. We would just call this first. And then we call all the same things without even changing, without even changing the defense, we would call all the same things out of the stack because it was the same personnel. 
So that's how we originally did it. That's one of my favorite ways to do it. We may be able to do that again in a year or two based on some young kids, uh, some incoming freshmen, incoming freshmen that I have in my program right now. We may get back to being able to do that from an even front or a 425 personnel group and then go to a 3-3 stack look with the same personnel. So what that evolved to? That evolved to us at a new job that I got, not having, after a year here, the first year here we had it and it was okay, and then after a year here we didn't really have two interior, we didn't have a one technique and a three technique that I liked or a two I and a three technique, whatever you want to call it. So we evolved into a stack team. So we evolved into a true three down linemen, three stack backers. So we, we evolved into a, into a three, three stack, true uh, personnel, three, three stack team. So what we had to do is we had to find a way to create our different fronts, to create our different fronts from the stack look. So if we wanted to get to an overlook from the stack group, okay, if we wanted to get to an overlook from the stack group, we had to add a linebacker in, in the deal. There was no way we could get to it without adding a fourth rusher, which was a linebacker. So in order for us to get to an overlook from here, all right, we had some choices. Originally what we did was we used the stack backer on that side, so we slanted Away from, away from the stack backer that was blitzing, away from the tight end, and post snap, that put us in 7, 3, again, 2i, 5, and put us in the over front. Okay? If we were going to play man behind this, we would take the safety that was playing man and vice the tight end and, and make the backer come off the edge, and now we got into an over vice look. So now we would get into an over vice look just by vice and playing man on the tight end. So we could get to an overlook, then we can get to an, you know, more of that pro 4-3 or that uh, old Florida State jet robber look where we would vice the tight end with a C-gap man player and bring a jet end, or for us it's a backer, off the edge of that. All right, if we, if we wanted to go, if we wanted to get to under, if we wanted to get to under, We could bring it the other way towards the tight end. We could bring it the other way towards the tight end. And now when we bring it towards the tight end, we can get to under by bringing it here, here, there, and there with a safety up playing that kind of loose nine. And we could get to an under look that way. All right, so we could get to over. We could get to under either way in our stack defense. We could always play the tight front the way we play it here at our place, we could always play the tight front in our stack just by taking the end and putting them in a four eye, all right? Um, taking um, our, our strong side end and then our weak side end, all right, which is our anchor, putting them in four eyes and then just kind of bumping the lion and the ram out a little bit so we could get to tight front. We could bring the lion and the ram up off the edge and we could get to bear double three techniques with the end and the anchor and those still head up and now we could bring these guys off the edge and we could get to bear so we could get from over to over vice to under to bear to tight we could get into all those looks from our 3-3 three, three stack and create those fronts and we can create other fronts those are the main fronts that we try to kind of create out of, out of the stack look um, and those are the things that we would kind of base out of, all right, that's how we're going to get to an overlook, that's how we're going to get to an underlook, that's how we play tight, that's how we can get to bear, all right. What we're now looking at, though, what that involved, when different stacks were involved coming off the edge, that changed the run fits for us. So a lot of times we would not play base coverage when we were changing, you know, getting to those fronts. We would go to a one-rat, uh, man-free, low-hole, high-hole type coverage, sending four because it changed our run fits. So I wasn't a big fan of multiple players changing the look of the front and the backers because you had to teach a lot more with your run fits. 
So what we're looking at doing now to make it a little bit more consistent is we're looking at possibly like we did, even though we're a 3-3 three, three stack and we're not 4-2-5, we're approaching it from the old-fashioned way I used to do it where we make the mic and we're even thinking about taking this mic position and calling it a joker and we make that guy the fourth rusher all the time. And now we can get to over under two different ways. All right, we can get to over by bringing him off the edge or inside the tight end for argument's sake. So if the tight end's there, we can get to over, and I'll, draw, I'll write it this way, it's easier. We can get to over by angling away from the tight end and bringing the joker and making him the seventh technique. We could get to over that way. We could get to over with a plug. So we could get to over using the mic as a plug. So we could get to over by leaving him, moving him, plugging him in the B gap, and we could get to over that way. We could do the same thing with under. We could get to under with a slant, which would mean slanting to the strength. So we're moving this way now and bringing that stack mic joker off the edge there and now we're in under or we could get to under okay by plugging it and we can get to under by moving these two leaving the end plugging the joker in the weak side b gap there to get to that under look so we could angle slant to it or we could plug to it to get into that uh, however we wanted to get into that over under look we could get into a pinch front or a double a gap front, leave the, end, leave the ends outside, put the nose in an A gap, walk up and plug the joker or the mic in one of those front side A gaps and we could get to, depending on what we wanted to do, we could get to, um, we could get to a double A gap pinch, uh, old fashioned tight front, it's not the same as the odd tight front, but we used to call it over tight because it took our, our interior techniques and made them both A gap players. Okay, some people call it Indian, some people call it, 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 there's a million technique or terms in football, so it really doesn't matter. This is one of the things that we preferred, and the reason we preferred it is because it left open B gaps, which is how we teach our run fits. So we teach our run fits with our line and our ram, all in our, in our end and our anchor, off of open B gap principles, and then marrying those two together, tied to the block of the tackle. So... The, the plug A gap for us with the mic was the best for us because it put us into a situation where the run fits for these two never changed. So what we're leaning back to doing is using the joker or the mic or my old three technique Malcolm, using him always as the fourth rusher and building our stunts and blitzes around that. So it's just more teaching for that joker because he... He, he didn't start as a three technique. He started as a stack Mike linebacker, and we made him become the three technique in our defense, in essence, in the overfront. And now the joker would always be the fourth rusher, which would give us more consistency with who we're teaching the run fits to and then who we're teaching some coverage things to. So we started as an over team, brought the three technique back to a stack, went to went to a true 3-3 three, three stack team, which we have been in the past. As a 3-3 three, three stack team the last two or three years, we have been using the line and the ram to create our under and over fronts. All right, when we use the line and the ram to create our under and over fronts, it changes our run fit. So we've been playing our under and over stuff with a lot of man-free, one rat, uh, we call it robber, 11 robber, but um, it's, it's really one rat in saving our college terms. We've got a low hole rat player, a high hole rat player, we're man on everybody else and we're sending four. So we would send the line or the ram and we would play low hole, uh, high hole rat, one rat, um, my 11 robber. And that's what we did because it changed the run fits for us. So I didn't like doing it and changing the run fits. So I changed the coverage so that we could fit off of man principles and make it easier so that we don't have to change our run fits. If we get the, the mic, eventually the joker, to become like my old three technique was, and we teach him all the things that we that we talked about earlier from our overfront. We teach him these principles, and we teach him all right what 
the twist stunt is, and the exit stunt is, and the pirate stunt is, and the blood stunt. We teach them all those things. Now we have multiple movements with that stack mic or joker to get us from the stack into different looks up front. But I would have to change the run fits. I would have to go back and teach the lion and the ram the way we used to teach our 4-2-5 run fits. Not that that's a bad thing. We played some good defense in the 4-2-5, but we went to the 3-3 stack because of personnel and because I felt like it simplified run fits for the players and the coaches. So I'm not really sure if I want to get back to this or not because it'll change the run fits for these two. So we are currently in a process of analyzing, do we want to go back to our old, all right, with the personnel we got, not this year, it won't be this year. It might be next year or the year after. With the personnel we got coming up from our young kids, do we feel like we've got a one technique and a three technique to be able to go back to 4-2-5 over football? If we do, then is the three technique athletic enough to walk back here and do things? If he is, and I think I have a ninth grader that is actually, to me, the closest I've found to my old player Malcolm Kearse as far as his build and his athletic ability, I think he can become that guy in the next three years as a 10th, 11th, 12th grader, and I think we can go from over to stack the way I used to back in the old days, which would be the best for me because that's when I think we were at our best. All right, so we may get out of our stack and back into um, our old over stuff and morph into the stack when we need to with the same coverage principles and blitzes and everything being the same. That makes us as multiple as possible. That's the year we did that, we were as multiple as we've ever been on defense, and I really love that. Our 3-3 stack stuff isn't as multiple, but the run fits are simpler. We've actually been better against the run the last two years here at my current school as a 3-3 stack team than we were with all that multiplicity built into the 4-2-5. We're better against the run last two years than we were in the year we went 9-1 and one because our run fits are simpler and we're doing a little bit better job. So you got to look at the results and you got to look at your schedule and teams you played. The last two years we were six and four, five and five. We were five and two at both in both seasons with a chance to play for a district championship and a playoff berth, and we just didn't get it done at the end of the year. So we played better defense than the year we went nine and one. The year we went nine and one, we scored 43 points a game. We were really good on offense. We were good on defense and we were very multiple on defense, and we caused some people headaches. And that's the way I would like to get back to. I would like to get back to over four two five morphing to the 3-3 with the 3 technique if he's athletic enough, all right? But right now we play better statistical football out of the 3-3 stack as far as stopping the run because the run fits are simple. All right, so that's an explanation of how we create fronts in the stack, how we went from where we were to where we are now, what we're thinking about possibly doing with a joker at Mike as the fourth rusher all the time, what we do with the Lion and the Ram as the fourth rusher right now. All right, so that's just a look at the 3-3 stack and how we – uh, try to create some multiple looks out of it. All right, so I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football on this YouTube channel. Hopefully you're playing football again. We start our first practice Monday. All right, hopefully you guys are all safe. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. If you start football soon, good luck to you. If you start football in the spring, good luck to you. This too shall pass. We will get back to normal hopefully sometime soon. All right, you won't play well until you play fast, and I'll see you guys next time.